The Lord be with you. We welcome you to Zion today. We gather for an exciting day, not only an exciting liturgical day as we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord, but an exciting day in the life of Zion as we install DCE Catherine Snyder as our Director of Christian Education. We're so excited to welcome her. And now, let me point out, they have the whole family crew here. Now, I don't know, I can't remember everybody's names, but I do know husband John is here. Raise hand high. Very good. And then Henry is, so, well, he's right there, and Leonard is next. And then Bruce and Jana, is that right? And they're from uh, Johnston area, right? And now, okay, Grandma and Grandpa, I can't remember first names, but this is our esteemed guest, Grandma and Grandpa, they're from, is it Lakeview or Lake City? Which one? Lake City. Okay, good. And Joe and, uh, uh, I don't come, Jin, is it Jin? Jan. Okay. Jan or Jin? Jen. Okay, good. We'll work on that. And, I, and they have a six-month-old whose name I can't remember either. Evelyn. Okay, good. From, camp, from uh, Wichita. Oh, this is so exciting to welcome you as our guest today and celebrate with, with your family. We're so excited to make Catherine a part of this family and the, the whole Schneider family a part of our family. Some directions on how things will go. In just a minute, after I'm finished here, I'm going to walk back to the back and we're going to sing our opening hymn, which is Lift High the Cross. I will have you stand and we'll follow the cross in and Catherine will accompany me in and then she will join her family for the first part of the service. After the sermon, I'm going to invite her forward. Now, children, listen, because you get to be a part of this, which is really pretty cool. So Catherine's going to be standing here, and you are going to gather on the floor. You'll be able to sit on the floor all around her for the installation piece. So I'll invite you forward when it's time, but you get to be a part of this. And we'll talk more about what a director of Christian education is at that point. Just know you get to come forward at that time. Now, a part of the service that is a tradition of the Transfiguration service, at the end of the service, our Alleluia banner will be recessed out during the final hymn. This is our way of burying our Alleluias as we enter into the season of Lent. Lent begins for us on Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday, at 545 we'll have our service, and afterwards our meal. Most of those services will be about 45. Expect the Ash Wednesday service to be a little longer because we have the imposition of ashes and we do communion. Now, one just plan ahead note. Looking at the forecast, right now they're saying there's a chance of freezing rain. If that's the case and we need to, to delay that service, we'll simply put it to the Sunday. We'll do an Ash Sunday. Okay, I know that's not the way we usually do it, but we'll watch the weather and make sure. So if it's icy, uh, we will try to move it back but we'll wait and see because the forecast always changes. So watch for that. Okay, after the service, when we dismiss, go and find us. If you're staying for the meal, and I hope you do stay, go and find a seat. That's going to do a couple things. That gives people who brought food and you need to get it set up. That'll give you time to get it set up. And then we're going to have Rhonda Moore offer a word of welcome. She's over here. She's going to participate in our installation during that time from our district office. And then I'll have just a very brief word of welcome as well. And then we'll go get our food and enjoy our time of fellowship. Okay, so that's what's coming afterward. Now, one other, let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, two other items. One, you will see a webinar being offered by Alliance Defending Freedom. This is not coming up till the first part of March, but take note of this. This is a live webinar at 11 o'clock on March 2nd, and it's dealing with church and culture, equipping the parents in your congregation with a biblical view of gender. Pretty relevant topic. I'm, they're expecting to video that and make a recording available, because I know a lot of people don't have 11 o'clock on a Thursday morning, I think it's a Thursday, available. So watch for the recording, and I'll get that out to you when I have it. And next Sunday, is our game day, not during church, uh, from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock next Sunday afternoon, and then we'll have pizza at 5. So if you've got a favorite board game or card game or something you want to come share, you don't have to be a kid to come to this. Okay, All generations are invited to be a part of this. It's a fun time just to play games and be together. So that's next Sunday from 3 to 5. Okay, lots of things going on in the life of Zion. Uh, always exciting to celebrate it with you. Let me get back to the back, and the way that that'll work is, I'll get to the back, and as 
as the cross comes in, then we stand, okay? So Nathaniel will introduce the first verse. The hymn begins on the refrain, so he'll play the introduction and we'll begin with Lift High the Cross. But let me get back there. As the cross comes in, I invite you to stand and then we'll uh, begin our service. Okay, you can begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. You may be seated. Please note on the fourth verse of the Trinitarian verse, and we'll stand for that verse. We sing our hymn.
may be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 24. You heard in our uh, intro it, this talk about worshiping the Lord on his holy mountain. And this has deep roots in the Old Testament theology of God descending on Mount Zion, on Mount, Mount Sinai, and then on Mount Zion when the temple was built. So this mountain idea is such a big deal, and you're going to have Moses go up on the mountain, and this cloud of God's presence, which simultaneously conceals and reveals God's presence, will descend. And we'll see that same cloud show up in our gospel reading with the transfiguration. We'll see those connections. Moses is sealing the covenant with the people of Israel, and when there is a covenant, in the Old Testament especially, but even for us, there is blood. The blood of the covenant that Christ has used to seal is in his cross and in the sacrament of the altar. But here, Moses seals the covenant with blood. We begin with verse number 8. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God, and ate, and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with which the law and the commandments with which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return for you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you, Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now, the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, chronologically, it would make more sense for us to read the gospel reading first because Peter is going to reflect back on that experience. So go back and see if you can find the epistle reading, not yet for the Hallelujah. Oh, is it not there? Okay, well, just listen then. Apparently, 2 Peter disappeared from the screen. So, nonetheless, he's, it's still in Scripture, so we're good. Uh, so, 2 Peter chapter 1, and he's reflecting back on the gospel text, which we'll get to in just a minute. We listen, beginning at verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased, we ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven. For we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, the no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and we sing together our Alleluia and verse. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We begin with verse number one. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May be seated for our hymn. Grace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God speaks to us today in our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 17. It is the account of Christ's transfiguration. I love this text for so many reasons. One, it has such rich imagery and theology reflected in some really profound language. Two, it masterfully presents Jesus to us. And three, it is a great text for installation, for an installation celebration. And I'm excited to share it with you. First, let's appreciate some of the language. Matthew says that Jesus took Peter and James and John up on a high mountain, and while they were on the mountain, Jesus was transfigured 
before them. His face, Matthew writes, shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. This is such a great word here, this transfigured word. It shows up in some key places in Scripture. One is obviously here, but Paul uses it in Romans 12, where he writes, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That's just such a marvelous image. Be transformed. Be transfigured. Or we could just say plainly, be changed. Be changed by God's word. Let it get into your soul and change you from the inside out and make you truly different from the world. Paul uses it again in a more dramatic way in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, where he's reflecting upon Moses' mountaintop experience where Moses saw the backside of God's glory. When he comes down the mountain, the people say, Moses, put a veil over your face. Your face is too radiant. We can't handle it. So Paul writes this. We all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory into another. Right? You catch that. We all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, right? We didn't go up on that mountain. What's Paul talking about? Well, the full answer is longer than we have time for in this sermon. But for the short answer is this. We see the glory of God in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And Paul says that this ministry transforms us into the image of Christ. It transforms us from glory into glory. And here's our simple point for now. The ministry of the gospel changes us. It changes us from the inside out. And it's headed somewhere to glorified, resurrected bodies on a renewed earth. And we get a glimpse of that glorified body in Christ's transfiguration. Because there we see a body shining in the glory of God. Now, there are more amazing words, but We've got a few more miles to cover, so we need to keep trucking. Peter, James, and John see Jesus transfigured right before their eyes, and then Moses and Elijah miraculously show up. Now, Peter offers to build some tents for them, and you can't blame Peter for trying to do something. I mean, if, if he was recalling Moses' last mountaintop experience with God, well, when God gave the Ten Commandments, right? Moses was up on that mountain for 40 days. So, I mean, building tents probably seemed like a pretty good idea. But before he finished, a great bright cloud, the cloud of God's presence that simultaneously conceals and reveals God's presence, the cloud that simultaneously reveals the invisible holy God and conceals his full glory, lest those who see him die. This cloud rolled over them, and God speaks. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now God had spoken something nearly identical at Jesus' baptism, but now he adds, listen to to him. And as if to make his point, Moses and Elijah disappear and leave Jesus only. With emphasis, Matthew writes, when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And that brings me to the point I want to park on. Catherine Today is an important day. It's an exceedingly important day. I remember the day that I was installed here at Zion nearly 13 years ago. I remember the message that Pastor Licht preached. And Catherine, I know you will remember this day. 
And Zion, I know you will too. And I'm thrilled to be celebrating this day on Transfiguration Sunday because I can think of no better model for ministry than the one set by Moses and Elijah. Now, it's a fascinating question as to why they were chosen to meet with Jesus on this mountain. I mean, were they the quintessential representatives of the law and the prophets? Maybe. Did they image the scriptural hope of the predecessor and the precursor of the Christ, right? Moses had prophesied that the Lord would raise up a prophet like him, and they were supposed to listen to him. And the prophets had repeatedly prophesied that an Elijah figure would come before, the, before Christ. He would be this precursor figure to Christ. And both of those are possibilities. But at the end of the day, why they were chosen, why they appeared on the mountain, remains an open question. What fascinates me, however, is the thing that shows me, the thing that shows me what ministry is supposed to look like isn't found in why they appear. It's found in why they disappear. In fact, that seems to be the point. Not why they appeared on that mountain, but why they disappear. The point seems not to be why they came into view, but why they faded from view. They get us to see no one but Jesus only. And Catherine, I can think of no better model for ministry than the one set by Moses and Elijah. Because they show us that we are not called to draw attention to ourselves. We aren't called to build our brand. We aren't called to establish a following. We are called to bring glory to no one but Jesus only. We're called to preach no one but Jesus only. We're called to confess no one but Jesus only. We're called to announce hope in no one but Jesus only. So that means every day we check our egos at this door. Because we're here for no one but Jesus only. And Catherine, I know you know this, but this is not a nine to five job. <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> she knows. You don't clock in and you never clock out. The church doesn't just want to know if you can confess Christ in these walls. They want to know if that confession is real out there beyond these walls. They want to know if it's real in your family. They want to know if it's real in your marriage. They want to know if it's real in your community life. They want to know if it's real in your finances. So they aren't just asking you to tell them about Jesus. They're asking us to show them Jesus, to show them how to live this confession of Christ. And allow me a moment of somberness. They also want us, if God would so choose to call us into his presence while we serve in this place, they want us to show them how to die with the confession of Christ on our lips. And that is a sacred calling, Catherine. And friends, I want you to know that that is precisely what Pastor Johnson is currently doing. It is not a road that he would have chosen or any of us would have chosen for him. But it is a road that God has chosen him to walk. And he is walking it well. Some of you ask why God would take him so early at such a young age when he's doing such great work. I don't know. I don't know. No. But here's what I do know. Pastor Johnson, as a partner and friend in ministry, the ministry to which you, Catherine, have been called to assist, Pastor Johnson is honoring not only his ordination vow, but also the promises connected to his baptism. He is confessing Christ before us, and he is showing us not only how to live with the confession of Christ on his lips, but how we can die with the confession of Christ 
on our lips. He is showing us how to finish well. How to confess Christ in life, how to confess Christ in death. And Catherine, you join this mission. Now I want to tell you, this is a great place to do mission. This is a great family. This is a great church. These people come from great communities with great histories and great stories. These people are hard workers. They love their communities. They love the land and they care for it. They love their livestock and they tend to it. They are loyal to their families. And when they believe in something, they pour themselves into it. And they believe in this mission. And that's why they've called you. But this mission is not easy. There will be days when you are tired, when your kids haven't slept, when you haven't slept. There will be days when you feel empty and fatigued. There will be days when you feel uncreative and uninspired. There will be days when people will make the mission difficult. When people will let their ego or their pride or their desire for power get in the way. And there will be days when they will love their sin more than they love the mission of Christ. There will be days when you will hear more complaining than praising. There will be personalities that will clash with yours. And there will be days when tragedy strikes our church family, when death butts in, when diagnoses knock us off balance. There will be days when the roof leaks. And you will spend your time mopping floors and emptying buckets. There will be days when you won't feel like showing up. There will be nights when you think, I don't want to do this again tomorrow. And that's why we're going to extract a vow from you. <laughs> you will be asked, do you solemnly promise faithfully to serve God's people in your office in accordance with the Holy Scriptures? And with these confessions, will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? And you will answer simply, I will, with the help of God. And Zion family, you will be asked, will you receive her, show her fitting love and honor, and support her by your gifts? and fervent prayer. And you will answer simply, we will, with the help of God. Now, lest anyone think ministry is nothing but a killjoy, there will be days when you feel like breaking out into great doxologies of praise, days when you are so profoundly humbled that you get to be a part of Christ's missions, days when you see the fruit of faith in people's lives. There will be days when you feel like singing, and I hope you do. And from what I know of you, I expect you will. Now, let me return to Moses and Elijah. Let me return to Peter, James, and John. And let me return to Jesus. Moses and Elijah disappeared. Peter, James, and John saw no one but Jesus only. And as they came down the mountain, Jesus told them to tell no one until he had been raised from the dead. In other words... It won't make sense until Jesus rises from the dead. This mission doesn't make sense apart from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it is the message, the good message, the good news of Jesus' resurrection that we will speak into this mission. The good news of Jesus' resurrection that will drive this mission. The good news that will drive us in mission. The good news that will get us out of bed every morning and motivate us in mission. Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. And through our baptism, we are joined to his death and to his resurrection. And that means our lives are bigger than now. 
bigger than our individual circumstances, bigger than our fatigue, bigger than our fears, bigger than our stresses, bigger than our sins, bigger than our struggles, even bigger than our successes. It means our lives are bigger than leaky roofs and uncertain futures. It means our lives are as big as Christ's resurrection, as big as Christ's kingdom, as big as eternity. And I'll tell you what, when that gets into your souls, that ignites the mission. And Catherine, that's what you get to be a part of. And Zion, that's what you are a part of. And that's why we preach no one but Jesus only. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord, to life everlasting, amen. I invite you to stand. We have the distinct privilege of confessing the Apostles' Creed. And as we do that for our guests, we like to confess the Creed loudly. So I invite you with joy and confidence to confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this point, we're not doing offering yet. I know we usually do. I'm going to invite Rhonda forward. So I get her up here. Catherine, I'm going to invite you forward and give you a running start so you can beat the kids up here. Here you go, Rhonda. Yep. Catherine, I'm going to put you right here. And then kids, I want you to come up here. So come on up. Perfect. And I want you to sit on this side and on this side. You're going to face the congregation. And then you guys have to look at my backside for the moment. But nonetheless, you get to see Catherine. Come on up here, guys. Come on up here. Find a seat. Wonderful. Go on up. You can sit right up there. Sit around Catherine. Perfect. So Catherine is, we use the words DCE, but that stands for Director of Christian Education, which means she's going to partner with us to teach us about Jesus. And she loves doing that. And she loves kids. And she loves adults. She loves partnering in the, with the generations. So what we're doing today is a really important thing. We're installing her. We're saying to her, we put you in this office as director of Christian, Christian education to partner with us to help teach all of us about Jesus. So you're going to see her working with the Sunday school. You're going to see her working with our opening times before Sunday school. You're going to see her working with the Vacation Bible School and the Christmas program and confirmation and other Bible studies. You're going to see her all over the place because there's lots of ministry to be done here, and we're excited to celebrate that. So we are going to install, so I want you to listen, and I'm going to say some things, and Ms. Rhonda Moore is going to say some things. She works at our district office. They are helpers for our churches throughout our district on the west western side of Iowa. So she's one of our main helpers. And do you know where she grew up? Right here. <laughs> we sent her from here out to do ministry in the church. And she went to Denison. And then she went to Texas. Did you go back? Yeah, twice. Tw back, back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth. Now, now she's back here. I'm here to stay. Now. Yeah, she's here to stay. <laughs> so she did a lot of similar things to what probably some things that Catherine yes. has done, mm -hmm. right? Right, so she came from here. Isn't that cool? Now, okay, I want you to listen to what we're going to do here. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, according to the church's usual order, Catherine has been called to the office of Director of Christian Education at Zion Lutheran Church. 
This office has been established in love by the church to support the office of the holy ministry, that's the office I serve in, and to assist the faithful in their God-given vocations, to assist everybody out there and everybody right here. Hear the word of God concerning this office. The first reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his ex exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 20, but Jesus called all, all of them together and he said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever will be great among you must be your servant, and whoever will be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Okay. Now, Catherine, I address you, and you have your responses in front of you. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired Word of God, and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. The next question I'm going to ask her has to do with the confessional documents of our church body. They may not all be terms you're familiar with, but these are all documents that express what we believe the Bible teaches. Okay? So if you have questions about them, ask me afterwards. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession? to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the Word of God. Do you solemnly promise faithfully to serve God's people in your office in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? I will with the help of God. Brothers and sisters, you have heard the confession and solemn promise of Catherine, who has been called to the office of Director of Christian Education in this church. I ask you now, in the presence of God, will you receive her? 
show her fitting love and honor and support her by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, then joyfully answer. We will with the help of God. The Almighty and most merciful God, strengthen and assist you always. Amen. Now, are you ready and willing to assume this office and work? I am. Catherine, I install you to the office of Director of Christian Education at Zion Lutheran Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and most merciful Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you have given your people diverse and singular gifts. We thank you for providing faithful men and women in your church to assist the office of the Holy Ministry and to support Christians in their vocations. Grant your Holy Spirit to Catherine and adorn her with wisdom and power from on high that she may serve faithfully in her work to the honor and glory of your holy name through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, bless you, and strengthen you for faithful service in his name. Amen. Can we welcome Catherine? Wonderful. Boys and girls, I am really excited about you getting to know her. She's an amazing lady, and she already loves you. I know it. She does. So make sure afterwards you come up to her and say, say your name and say hi. Okay, tell her who you are, and you're going to tell her, tell her your name every week for the next month or two, okay? <laughs> tell her your All name. Of you. In fact, everyone, <laughs> the way you come up and say hi, you say, hi, I'm so and so. Just every week for a month, just introduce your name. And then the next part is, who you're related to. And do that for me too, okay? <laughs> I'm still learning all of that. Okay, here's what's gonna happen next as we gather our offering. Number one, uh, choir, you can start making your way up there. I'm gonna give you a head start before these kids start uh, the wave that way. And our basket is over there. If you brought your children's offering, you can take it over to the basket. If you didn't, you can go back and get it. So we'll do that. You kids can start moving that way and we'll gather our offering.
Thank you, choir. That was powerful. Thank you. We stand to pray. Lord God, receive our thanks and praise on this great day. First, we celebrate the transfiguration of Christ and that by Moses and Elijah disappearing and Christ alone being left, that we understand that we are to give our full attention and allegiance to no one but Christ only. Bless the ministry and mission in this place. We celebrate as we welcome Catherine as our director of Christian education. And as she and as her family join us in this mission to confess no one but Jesus only. Give us joy in this mission. Continue to raise up faithful supporters of this mission to drive it forward that we may bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into the lives of our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, our family, our friends, that we may have our hearts filled with this new song, a gospel song of joy in Jesus, so even in the midst of our sorrows, and we do have our sorrows, that we would not be left alone in our sorrows, but we would find hope in the gospel in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, there are many who are in need of your grace. We entrust to your care Lyle Munt, Pastor Johnson, Stan Bach, Tanya Jacobson, John Bexton, Jim Devers, Rick Spock, Justine Schwizo, Sherry Steffes, and Bliss Newman, we ask your blessing to be upon them, that you would give them grace sufficient for each day, and that you would grant them the healing you have in store for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for the privilege not only of supporting our missionaries, but of knowing our missionaries as they send words of greeting, as they come in person. We give you thanks. We pray for Pastor Oliver, Pastor Lopez, Pastor Ferry, Mark and Megan Monti, Tirza Cray, for cross-cultural worker Molly. Give them joy to confess Christ where you have called them and allow the confession of Christ to take root in those who hear that it may produce the fruit of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our law enforcement and military men and women, Scott Stribe, Stephen Grimm, Aaron Stokel, Lillian Ginzen, Tanner Crawford, and Danny Vogel, may your hand of protection be upon them, and may they know Christ as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our partnership with Trinity in Manila. We rejoice to see the fruit that is produced in the lives of those who hear the gospel and confess Christ in these places. And we pray that you would strengthen this partnership, that the gospel of the kingdom may go forward. We give you thanks for our preschool, for the privilege of confessing Christ to children. Strengthen our director and assistant and our board and continue to raise up faithful supporters so that we may continue to confess Christ to children and families and share with them his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace, Lord God, in Ukraine and for justice. We pray for a relief in Turkey and opening of doors for the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we again celebrate to welcome Catherine and John and Henry and Leonard to the family of Zion. May we confess Christ in this place and together live out this life in Christ. These prayers we bring before you in the name of Jesus and at his command and invitation, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. Let me give just a couple directions and then we're going to sing our last hymn. So you guys can be seated. When we're done, you can make your way out and be seated. If you're, staying for, if you're not staying for food, you don't have to be seated. But if you are, just find a seat. We're going to have just a few minutes of welcome and celebration address. Rhonda's going to bring greetings from the district. I have just a few words to offer. And then we're going to eat, okay? During the last hymn, the third verse has these words. Alleluia cannot always be our song while here below. Alleluia, our transgressions for a, wh- for a while make us for a while forego. For the solemn time is coming when our tears for sin must flow. The solemn time is Lent. So you're going to see the Alleluia banner recessed out or buried, and we will bury our Alleluias during the season of Lent. And then we will resurrect that Alleluia on Easter morning. So we turn to our last hymn. 